What's up guys, welcome back to The Home Slice this week. I'm kind of catching up with this video because I've sort of blitzed through trying a whole bunch of different sharpening methods and then testing them on the Victorinox knives in the rope cut tests that I've been doing to try to analyze what the steel and the steel matrix is doing at the edge so that we can sort of narrow down what is the best edge to focus in on for future testing. And I've sort of rushed through some methods, so this video I'm going to kind of try to catch up a little bit. Basically, we sharpened a knife on a wood block with some Mother's Mag automotive polish, and that did quite well. And I've had a lot of guys ask me, how do you do that? So we're going to do a quick tutorial for that, as well as how to build a hanging denim strop and a simple way to make a flat denim strop because the best results that I've been getting right now have been, at least for the dual grit edges, have been dual grit edges cleaned up on a flat denim strop, and the best fine results that I've been getting lately have been fine edges cleaned up on a hanging denim strop. Now, you guys might have some questions, some other questions, since I've been sort of rushing through things, and I'll probably upload a big, unapologetically geeky and long video tomorrow talking about all my current sharpening theory research and thoughts, and that'll be to fill in sort of the hardcore viewers. But for the rest of you, if you're just here for the sharpening info, this video is for you. So we'll start by sharpness testing the two knives that we're going to do this on, and then I'll explain how to do each kind of sharpening implement one at a time. Okay, so the first knife that we'll do a sharpness test for is my K-Bar Becker BK7 with custom black walnut handles. If you want to see that, maybe I'll throw a link to the video where I make those up here, or the video series. This one, I'm, I've done a big test with a dual grit edge with the BK7 on like a 1x10 board where I did over a thousand chops and 40 big heavy batoning blows to it and just tried to sort of ascertain how the edge kind of dulls. And I actually am working on right now getting this under 100 bess so that I can actually compare the edge degrading of a dual grit edge in a chopping test versus an edge that's under 100 bess. So I'm working on that right now. I don't think it will be under 100 bess now, although I've put it through a pretty good regiment of stones and strops already to get it ready for the hanging denim strop. I'm hoping the hanging denim strop gets us under 100 bess. Right now I anticipate it'll be somewhere around the 200 mark, but could be a bit more. 256, so not great yet. Not fully deburred yet. The knife that we will be doing on the pine block will actually be different. It'll be my Spider Co. Military in M4, which recently cut up a whole bunch of cardboard boxes and so I don't anticipate great things from this edge. It actually will need the resharpen, but let's see how badly. Two twenty four. <laughs> CPM M4 is a beautiful thing. So that's better than the Becker that just got sharpened. That's pretty wild and a used edge. CPM M4, everybody. It's good stuff. My apologies if the audio is a little bit lower quality. On that first segment of videos, I realized that my Rode Video Micro may not have been plugged in entirely. The first thing we're going to do is create a disposable sharpening stone on a piece of leftover pine. <laughs> now, this is stained on three sides, and we're going to use the unstained side. The reason being that for automotive polishes and things like this, that they don't regulate the particle size super closely. And that's not always actually a bad thing. If you're using a somewhat flexible and a somewhat porous strop, then what actually happens is you load the strop up with the sharpening compound. And as the metal goes over it, the larger particles, like the big 10 micron particles, they get pushed down into the pores of the wood or the weave of the fabric. 
and they get pushed out of the way gently because of the texture of the thing that you're using to sharpen on. While the smaller ones, they have no need to do that because they don't get pushed on with as much pressure and so they present themselves sort of more on top of the sharpening object. So what you end up with is a somewhat sort of roughly self-leveling honing device. So even though the wood has a rough texture and generally you want to sharpen with sort of things that are sort of flat, things like the denim or the wood, they have a way of either sort of turning themselves sort of flat or that texture actually works for you to remove extra amounts of burr and clean up the edge a little bit. This is what I'm using. It's called Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Mother's is the brand. And it, you can pick this up at an automotive store. It's like five to $12, really cheap. Uh, it looks like this. It smells really nice. Mine's uh, beginning to dry out a little on the top. So you literally, I mean, this stuff is made for cars. Take a generous amount, apply it to your wood block and rub it into the texture. If you get too much, then you might want to return the extra into the canister. Once you have put this stuff out, it begins drying out. And once it has dried out, you do not want to reapply. So this is truly kind of a disposable technique. It's for like your in cuts of wood, turning them into a one time sharpening stone. You use it for a batch of knives and then you rotate it to another side or you simply throw it away if you've used up all the sides. I'm going to put that extra away for later for our denim strap. Um, so you want a good even coating. It's okay if there's a little bit of extra. As I said, the knife will push some of it into the texture. And once you've got it sort of where you want it, tinker around with it a little bit. You can clean your hands off. Get a non-slip pad and we'll sharpen up the spider co on this. You want to use edge trailing strokes, but other than that, you use it pretty much the same way you would any other stone. You'll notice as you go along that when you lay your your knife with the edge flat to the wood block, you'll hear a sort of abrasive sound. And that's how you sort of know that you're getting the right angle. Also, you'll notice that it will build up along the edge of your knife. And you'll notice that the polish in the block of wood will start to discolor and turn the color of metal as it removes metal from the edge. Every now and then you may want to take the extra off of your edge and wipe it back on the stone and load the stone back up so that you're not running on dry wood. But other than that, I would say give it 20 to 50 back and forths alternating direction and you should be pretty good at a pretty good fine edge. That 20 to 50 strokes is like 20 if you've already got a bit of an edge there and you've got a harder steel that's going to get crisp right away and you don't want to round it. The 50 would be like if you have just done a coarse stone and you're sharpening something that's a little softer like a Victorinox paring knife or something like that. To be fair, I should have showed you what the edge looked like when we started because it was starting to form patina and stuff like that because I had used it outdoors and washed it and used it in the kitchen. So it was beginning to discolor and looking much less pleasing and much less shiny. But I don't know if you can see, but that uh, one thing about that polish is that it will create you a very nice mirrored edge very quickly. So let's test that real quickly. And that's really it for creating a polished edge using a wood block. So hopefully this is better than 224. We'll see. This 
So there we go, down to 165 with only using the pine block. So 225 to 165, it's quite a significant increase in sharpness and it creates quite a crisp edge. I'll go get a piece of paper so that I can demonstrate. It's worth noting that I wouldn't recommend this as like a single stone sharpening job like I just did to restore an edge. This is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, I would say with softer steels, you can use this as sort of a replacement for some of the fine stones at the finer end of your progression, but you still probably need to strop with something like leather in order to get the best possible fine edge if that's what you're going for. I would also say that for hard high carbon steels with a lot of carbide in them, this works as a decent replacement for one of your less fine stropping steps, if that makes sense, because of the different ways that those two steels make burrs. So let's try printer paper first, and we should be zipping through. We are. So that's easily slicing. I think we'll push cut. So I'll push cut pretty well. A little hesitant on the push cut. Um, very good on the slicing. Let's check out our paper towel, and then we'll move on to denim. So that's one hand slicing paper towel fairly well. Okay. So the first place where denim can be really helpful, or a linen strop as they're traditionally called, is in your dual grit edges or your real high hardness steels. You can use it at the edge angle, so you, you don't want to use a hanging strop, generally speaking. There are some exceptions to that. It depends on the ductility of the steel, but you, you can use it as a flat strop. So I cut a leg out of these Levi's jeans that I just got at a secondhand store. And to be honest, you want to be forced to keep your touch really light with this. And so honestly, what I've been doing is setting one of my other stones on one side, pulling it tight um, on top of a non-slip. Hold up. Arr! Try that again. Putting one of my stones on each side of it, pull it tight, put one on the other, just, just to use as a weight, and allow the stones and the non-slip pad to keep it flat, and this forces me to use really light touch. You want to load up the denim. It will take a little more than the wood because there's more texture there but you want it you want to still be able to sort of see the tops of the fibers the texture of the fabric you want to still be able to see it now you can see i've done several slots on this already so i just cut the bottom of the pant leg off and because it's more of like a disposable strop you can actually load it up once and then just rotate to the next little section and rotate 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 until your pant leg is done and then cut yourself another pant leg the hanging strop is a little different, and you use that for steels with greater ductility or more like conventional stainless steels, and I'll get into that next. So you can see right now that the texture is becoming visible. There's not a lot of polish just sitting out on top of it, and that's good. That's what you want. And once you've accomplished that, you can take your edge that was sharpened on your fine stone, and you can deburr it fairly effectively using the texture of the denim by going at the edge angle and doing really light strokes. You may have to sort of reset your jeans every few strokes, but I kind of like this to be honest because otherwise I just want to push too hard. And if I do it this way, it forces me to keep that lighter touch than I normally would. And it keeps me from crushing or ruining the apex, to be honest, because I am really prone to do that. I started sharpening on fine water stones and it felt like you would have to push really, really hard to get the burr to form. And I've carried that sort of bad habit with me and I'm trying to unlearn and trying to be more gentle in the, especially in the finishing steps of forming an apex.
Again, 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 alternating strokes on this. I wouldn't do more than 50. I've found as I, when I test it, the best numbers go down, 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 usually to um, a minimum of about 130 or 120 on a denim strop. And then it, by the nature of the strop, you often begin to round the edge a little bit and it starts, the numbers start climbing back up from there, or you form a second sort of foil burr. So you want to remove the foil burr, clean up the edge without overly rounding it or wearing on it so long that you form another burr, which is quite a balance for each individual steel. Harder steels will do that faster. The burr will pop off faster. Softer steels are more conventional stainless steels. You will need to work them a little bit longer. I am in a predicament because I've been talking to you and I haven't really actually been counting. Anyway, we'll give it five more and then we'll try it. Okay, we'll test that on the best machine and we will see if I have done it a little bit too much or a little bit too little for CPM M4, then the number will have gone up most likely from 165 grams. If I have done it a good amount that was helpful for the edge, then it will be a lower. So there you go. I've gone up to 197. Judging by the feel of the edge, I think I've over-rounded it a little bit. I think the, uh, the denim strop tends to really clean up a dual grid edge, but it can be quite easy to over-round it. I don't think I've underdone it because usually if you've underdone it, it feels really bitey still and aggressive. If you've overdone it, it feels not quite as keen. Now, that said, 197 isn't necessarily a bad best score, and this slightly rounded edge is quite clean. You can see we're actually push cutting much easier, and this sort of highlights the different the different testing methods that you use. I did tear a little there. The different testing methods that you use, they really accentuate different characteristics of the edge. They're not always super uniform. I would assume it will do worse at the paper towel test, but we, we shall see. Yeah. See, so a rounded edge often will, oh, that's actually, that's not bad. It often will be easier to push cut, um, more difficult to pull off a paper towel test. So play around with your steels and see if you can produce some better numbers using that. Well, that's probably quite enough for you guys to digest and try out for one video. I think I will build the hanging strop in another video, split it into two videos. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you get good performance. I find that this Mother's Mag polish is a pretty economical option because it's pretty inexpensive and you can do a lot of applications with it and you can do multiple different kinds of strops with it. So give it a try. I hope that it boosts your sharpening performance and I'll release another video of building a hanging denim strop and we'll have a little discussion about the different applications where you need a hanging strop and the different ones where you need a flat strop and what they're good for and why the difference. But for now, I'll just say peace out to all of you from the home slice. Take care guys.